Hey everybody, this is Tavo, Tavo DRC of Tavo Creative Leadership. You know, I really don't believe in naming people and their names and their movements. I don't really believe that in that I try to go after it. That's why I'm writing so much. Like so far, I have a TMZ attack style Christian ministry series going where I even used AI, chat, GBT AI, to try to do an objective with Jesus, Paul, the first church openly reviled to the whole public area any false prophets and you can read that on tavoleader.com any other of the website ministries so today i'm going to say what i'm finding is when you look at all these videos that name call for i don't know how many years 12 years 15 years a little more there's this big deal about bashing what they call prosperity teachers all right it is the rage, it's the TMZ favorite, just say everybody that looks like one is one and paint all the pictures and defame this. I'm calling this the defaming and naming and defaming movement. We're, ours is not that. Try not to be, it's defragging. This is defragging, accusation, Levitical patriarch and, and occult witch watching stuff. So I'm just gonna say it because the Lord had me, you know, everybody's born in the time God needs you. So my mom and dad were Christians, Bible study students, scholars, ministers, pastors, their parents before I'm really calm, low-key type before all this. So they prayed. My mom said I was the first born. My mom says she they prayed that they would have me, but they didn't have me for eight years. So with that being said, and my sister's eight years younger. So with that being said, God placed me, I look in hindsight for this, to see prior to the modern day of famous face-seeking wannabeism, bashing everybody, who is really true and false, men and women, what in the world is a cultural Christian or a real Christian. And so I'm going to just go back and lay a little foundation, a couple of minutes of what I believe you need to tell, if you're going to bash people, call them out. Label all these people that aren't even the root of Word of Faith, which is where it started. And I'm not condemning Word of Faith. No, no, no. I'm telling them to protect some of them. Yeah, the original doctrine. That these people, especially the nouveau riche, looking for names and monetized videos that are out there, now just know that they can accuse the same faces please people to get money and make itself their own famous name so we're really recalling this naming and defaming movement the new the new prosperity teacher movement they're prospering off of bashing the old one <laughs> so let's go line upon line so back in the day my history goes when i was a real christian to my dad was a servant leader Christian Baptist pastor, but not a fundamentalist. He was fun. <laughs> Wasn't a legalist, under the law, not a little woman you can't, not a slave master, unsung, and he really loved my mom. They were happily married, happy campers, and I would look at hindsight, Ephesians 5, 21, not just about 22. It was like mutual submission in the fear of the Lord, which is how I'm raised, like a Billy Graham type, not racist, even though they were from the South. So I honor them and my family who are not like they're pioneering their own work and being called, but it wasn't no, no hero worship or anything, probably not much income, but they were really educated and intelligent. They also worked in teaching school as well. Good parents. All right. So before that happened, when that happened, they had life comes along and they started to have the Jesus people type movement. Uh, my father had quit full-time pastoring. We were living in Norfolk, Virginia, and he was supply pastoring. Later, we lived in Virginia Beach in teenage years, and he supplied pastored. And during that time, I remember my first Baptist musical called Pass It On or something like that, which my spirit, you know, my heart, I, was, I knew the Lord. My heart leapt. Thank you, Lord. It's not traditional hymns. I'm not a hymn type, though I value them, you know, certain ones. Everybody has their own call, though. So then later, as I grew up, the went to high school in in Norfolk, Virginia, and then we moved out to Virginia Beach to finish it up. And the Lord, uh, I was really seeking 
I was seeking something more. I knew about the Lord, but where we went was, I guess you'd call I'm not putting it down, but it was a Baptist church that was like, I guess you'd say Episcopalian, because my father had known the pastor at the seminary. And so I was hungry for something, and I was in the college prep classes. I loved my, you know, as a scholar. So back in the day, I remember they had horoscopes. This may be more than one part. Uh, so they had horoscopes, and it was Jean Dixon who said she was a Christian. You know, she's a Catholic. And then they had Edgar Casey, the psychic, at the front, waterfront, Virginia Beach, you know. So because when you're a person, you are human, and you have your soul and your call, and you then you're hungry for thirsty things. You want more if you have denominational or certain kind of teaching. You will have a unknown thirst, which is human. God puts it there. Then he and you will have to figure out what will fill it. So I didn't know it, but my mom and grandmother, my grandmother, my mother's mother, the prayer warrior boo, fun, not bossy. They, nobody's a Pentecostal, charismatic, speak, spoken tongues at all. This is the Lord doing his work. But they were led by the Holy Spirit and the Bible, like many people. So I didn't count on it, but my mother and my 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 um, grandmother must have known that I was looking at the wrong kind of spirit, because I was reading the horoscope, you know, and I was curious about more. I was hungry, because I have a call for the Holy Spirit, it turns out, thank God. So I will say this, they must have known by the Lord, because I didn't talk to them, Suddenly, my mom, when I was like a junior, she said, you're going to go to this Bible study at Virginia Beach. So it was the Jesus People Day, and I'm a dressed down kind, and even then. So I didn't want to go. But mom, my mom was, you don't argue with mom. So she was the enforcer. So as somebody else, not me, had said originally, I had a drug problem. I had a drug problem. My mom drove me to that Bible study at Virginia Beach, and it was a teacher who was laid back. I saw my first Jesus people. They wore blue jeans. They weren't religious. One of the things that turned me on was, because I didn't want religion. I hate performing. I hate dressing up. I like to do it now for the Lord or if I love somebody. You know, I like to do it the right way, but I just hated being fakey. So when I got there, all these people had long hair, jeans, blue jeans, you know, that kind still is popular. And when we got there, it was a, a down-to-earth sort of Jesus people Bible study. And I learned for myself, I love the Lord. I just didn't like religion. It wasn't my parents either. It was the way they presented it, and I saw sort of a Billy Graham approach, but, you know, she didn't tell me. She had a sign, and this is good for now, that everybody who is serving the Lord wants to know about Jesus has got to make a choice one day who you're going to serve and who's going to be on the throne of your heart. And she had a picture of everybody has a heart and there's a throne on it and either you make Jesus on the throne or yourself on the throne and that was really got to me I thought okay my ego the human carnal id ego whatever make him own, you know I'm going to do my way I saw that with the Lord's help and I chose to serve him with that going on then as I God sort of used that cross culture sort of non you know it not what was the word today? It's It was more hippie type thing, yet they weren't hippie. They were, but they weren't drug hippies. They were like dressed down. And happy people. You know, teenagers who look, they weren't weird looking either. That helped me. So then later, as time went on, the Lord led me to go to, a, to college. When I got to Virginia, made you know, the Lord led me to, to college in Richmond. And when I got there, I was on my own, knowing the Lord and being led by the Lord. And I made a choice when I was 15. And I said, Lord, I don't know what you want me to major in. I have no clue. I didn't feel as interested. You know, I didn't know what to do. So I said, I would like to have an experiment. That if I let you lead me by the Holy Spirit, Bible and fellowship, good teaching. 
if you let me you if I let you lead me I'm just gonna follow 24 7 365 and you show me what to do along the way and I'll do it and that's all I did so I never got out of there with a lot of I got out of there with a by the grace of God <laughs> I just felt I'll be honest it was a good place a friendly place it was just boring you know really I, I was like so I didn't know I was fine arts and creative like I do now so it was like sleepy but anyway I, it was great they provided you know God provided my parents a good college so I got out with a religion degree and the religion degree was 2.8 or something barely making it and I was fine because my main goal, knowing the Lord, loving the Lord with all my heart, not political, not red state, not anything like that. Jesus person, countercultural, that was the word, feeling happier with counterculture, which is me, but I know traditional, I can go both, both sides. So there it was, and I thought, all right, this is, I was going to major in mu music. That's why I went, because I was told I had a, piano professor that taught me said she had graduated from Juilliard and her she was mentored by Rachmaninoff and she said you need to major in music so I thought I will when I got there I don't like claws backbiting competitive caddy and that type of thing so I dropped out so God had me because later I did get it back yard so I majored because the Lord said there's I majored in religion and my main goal for getting out and getting degree which was a BA in a liberal arts school was to not get fooled and lose my faith in the Lord so I got I was good at apologetics I was good with all kinds of people but God I thought this is probably the most at least I got a degree however later when God called me God is so good. He called me and later said when all it came to be calling to ministry around town and you know being diverse with me and all the teaching and my mother my dad died at one point and my mother had sister moved up to Tulsa at the leading of the Lord from Virginia Beach. I was in Virginia with the new baby, you know, married and everything. And everybody started getting the Holy Spirit call. Mother and them went up to be part of the Word of Faith type thing. And that way I got to go up and learn about it. And then the moves of God, when I was 24, the Lord said, I want you to study the moves of God. And then one day I'll have you build bridges of understanding between the kinds. And that was 1976. So this was before mega, before micro, before movements that we know now, especially prophetic, especially worship. I, I can remember the fledgling, the fledgling beginnings, you know, like the first Jesus people music and uh, what was Larry Norman, I wish we'd all been ready. That was a prophetic music. You could Google that now, I wish we'd all been ready. Also Andre Crouch, African American, his, you know, through it all, all those. But I was always a timid person in general, but I'm a wild adventurer in the Lord never because I happen to know I've had rock solid foundations of what is a Christian what is not what is accusation what is racism but what is weirdness basically nobody's perfect nobody you know got it all right I don't either but we got a solid anchor and that's what we don't have now we want to have without flame throwing showbiz confusion maligning misogyny hodgepodge <laughs> mesmerizing so bit you know all that so when he called me he called me at the beginning of the charismatic move and the charismatic move I can trace from that's why I'm getting to the word of faith and prosperity teaching all right so all of it was sort of nominal you know low-key you either like it or you don't and I was always feeling led to be a part of the Christian community in the Virginia Richmond area when they came to getting all the Christians humbling ourselves and repenting for against racism because it had a lot of that tension there and uh, against denomination you know for the Lord to move so I was part of that before real ministry then the Lord called me when I was 24 silently in the Presbyterian Church where they had sound doctrine they were patriarchal white 
charismatic with Presbyterian St. Giles, but it wasn't Levitical patriarchism, and they weren't royals, they weren't biased, misogynist, occult. They were really sound doctrine. They were not, what is, I don't even know what all the Presbyterian things are. I keep track of the Bible, really. They weren't, what is it, some people would say, oh yes, they're all blah, blah, blah. They believe in predestination. Is that the one? No, they didn't. This is like sober determination back then. Are you willing to pay the price to die for the Lord or live for the Lord no matter what? And that was what, he, in 76, God worked on me. It was turned hindsight, the bicentennial of America. Whoa, what a difference. So I said, yes, I'll accept the call to study the body of Christ. Males and females, black and white, old and young, doctrines, book of Acts or not. It ended up me traveling around America to see lots of things. And because I'd been raised soundly with denominational, free spirit, not legalism, then I was able to go and learn myself more about Holy Spirit, the power of God, uh, moving in the Holy Spirit gifts, all the things, and it didn't offend me. But I had instances where I thought, wow, this is not good. If they were bossy and forcing it down me or, you know, I'm not like that. So it wasn't until later I got it to the, the critical Levitical came in after what I call the word of faith. I'd, you know, that was later, much later, that I knew about it. So in 19, God said, I want you to study the body of Christ. It'll be all kinds and colors. And one day their doctrine, no, their pet peeves, their doctrine, their habits in the ministry and one day I'll have you build bridges and that's all those years 47 years so I went on the way one day in slowly one day out whenever God said go somewhere I did I was married before children and with children whenever and that was fine I always said do you mind because I was Ephesians 521 there was no major hubbub or control about 522 that wasn't that's just country law mountain school of Mountain Williams School of Theology grad. So nobody I know right now that I would hang with thinks like that. It's only the divining groups now, basically. All right, so we were, you know, learning. And so I saw the different moves come around. I wasn't at the fountainheads of David Luplessy. That was Episcopalian and Catholic. I did get my mother along the way. My father never spoke in tongues. All the rest of us did. And my father, my mother got uterine cancer with x-rays shortly after, in the mid, before he died. And they lived in Virginia Beach. I was married in Richmond. So she and my sister prayed, and they ended up at a charismatic Catholic group in Norfolk called Living Waters. My, mom, my dad would go, but he never participated. You know, he was loving, silently, you know. So mom got prayed for and got healed at the Catholic charismatic living waters with x-rays before and after. And they lived in a more metropolitan area than I did. And she was invited to speak on the radio. So we're, we're not, you know, we're not boring. We might look like it, but we're not. It'll, so are many people. Well, dad died. He graduated to heaven on a field trip with his class. He taught in the Norfolk public schools, inner city, supplied pastor and and he was only like 58 so he went out the door on, in the end of May 1979 I just had my first child in Virginia and he said goodbye he was not overweight he jogged he ate out but he was you know look healthy so he went down to North Carolina with the field trip Kitty Hawk Memorial and then he was walking up and he departed well, that silent father, daddy, good dad, you know, he had been so a role model he still is. Before he died, we didn't know he was going to leave. He had taken off to stay with me when the new baby came. And he would, stayed with me a week because mom couldn't take off from school. He could. So he stayed, and this is huge for me, for the non-tongue talkers, all right, and the tongue talkers. We were around the table, you know, the baby had been born, you're getting used to that one week, 
And so we had a blessing. He thought, let's eat lunch at the table. So he held my hand. And when my dad, who never was a charismatic, never was against him, had been told that the book of Acts stopped by seminary, you know, but he lived the life of Jesus Christ, good model, on and off the stage in family. So we held hands, and when we held hands, my father, dignified father, it was like I saw a ribbon of love, the anointing for love from the father that touched me, that he never spoke about it. He was sort of timid, you know, toward me, you know, with his daughter, not being too emotional or anything. But I saw this love, and I thought, that's it. I wept because it was so child. It was just real love, no, no faking. So that kept me. And then when he died, about two weeks later, on the field trip, it hit the quiet, silent Jesus follower, like many people. It hit the news on Norfolk, Virginia Beach and North Carolina, maybe South, I wasn't on all the, I don't know how far, but he got his name up in lights, you know, the, when that happened, we were, you know, I came to Virginia, we all went to Virginia Beach, and we were not grieving the Holy Spirit, I had asked for the Holy Spirit baptism at age 20 in college, you know, really quiet, only quiet, no one's shaking me, making me do it, it's just a gentle revelation and a, you know, touch. So that kept me insulated, my family, and whenever I would weep, we would weep, basically, and mom and my sister and I, we would just get misty of the beauty of his love and, you know, genuine person, nice daddy, you know, the fun moments, which is a big deal, thank God. Well, what happened was, because Kimball Johnson Jr. had gone to heaven on a field trip at the Wright Memorial, it got publicity, but I was there at the house when people started to arrive, and I could see what this silent, calm gentleman, who respected all colors and everybody, everyone equally, his life, with no fanfare, unsung, had touched all these people because he just quietly was patient, easygoing, listening to them, you know, not troubled, not checking his watch. I, that is a model for me, frankly, it is. So there are different things that take, you know, like Billy Graham, you know, the soberness that you only live once. Hey, what if you, you know, you've got to make sure you're ready now and let people know, warn them. But then the love, easygoing and not striving, not stressed out and not troubled if people are a little kooky or a different color or style. I love that. I mean, it goes to my family basically, but really dad. So with that said, as I went on at age, you know, really before that age 24 is when the Lord called me to study the body of Christ, age 24 at the church, Presbyterian church. He said, it'll be for the last days to build unity in the body. Well, I was always had a heart for the community. The Christian community getting along black and white as I said as the journey went on it was not planned there was no scheme there was no plan it was like one day in, one day out whatever said oh God said oh go to a meeting it's word of faith a new move in town or Presbyterian or black whatever Holy Spirit Pentecost Whatever it was, later it was out of town to Florida, Oklahoma, then Dallas 15 years, now here, you know, many places, then speaking, you know, also. But it was like, before the Lord, that's all. And if you want to put a spin on it for you, anybody, you're living out your life to please and serve the audience of one. It could be a slow snail's pace it could be an Enoch analogy in Ela Enoch in Genesis 5 Adam's grandson walked and talked with God daily and one day he was a prophet and one day God took him I believe there are, I've noticed how many thousands and thousands of Enoch types of all races in the last 30 years there is an Enoch generation to me thinking well is that a sign that 
when day God could come, a prophetic sign that God could come and take us all if we're ready, if we're really ready. So that's on my mind a lot, a lot. But with that, the moves of God had opened up, and then due to word of faith never been on my radar and mom finding it and going up there and I was out and I had started my ministry in Richmond my official ministry through the Holy Spirit calling me and knowing of word of faith some but I was at an assembly of God see in cross buddy unity and in my family you don't care the name brand as long as they know the Bible they're true and you're sent that's all so when I went there, it was the most fine, even keel and respectful ministry of that day. It really was. It wasn't tough. It wasn't read my mind. It wasn't thou shalt not type. At all. No, it's just gentle, real nice. So there I was, and mom and sister had felt led to go up. My sister went to Oral Roberts, and my mother went to Raymond, and they both went to Raymond. So I would go up because TV had come in and then there's the Jim Baker thing and all these things we are starting to get more and more of the winds of doctrine good bad and not but there was no mocking prosperity teachers when I would go up there be sent several times I am always noticing people's you know hearts and their character and I know that when you look at people who come up like Kenneth Hagin let's say the start of prosperity movement before you named it and gr grabbed and accused with it it was word of faith which comes up to me from country hard knock culture that really were not under the law they were not under the law it's people that joined them later that have that so you can look at Oral Roberts which I never feel any leading to but he was a big part so Oral Roberts, for some reason, didn't feel whatever. And he had Native American in him. I've had many Native American friends, and they are very fine-tuned in hearing the Spirit. All right, so they are gifted. Uh, Kenneth Hagen was, I think, not under him or anything, but they were in the area. You think of him as Word of Faith. Kenneth Copeland came up through Oral Roberts and so did others. I can't keep track of them all, but I know quite a few. I don't want to get into that. Kenneth Hagen, excuse me, Kenneth Copeland and Gloria. Kenneth Copeland had Native American blood. They are very respectful and very cross-cultural. They are not misogynist. They are not one whit racist. The people, because they don't know who's fault, you know, says that all these Christians can take their name, trade on it, gossip saying we're under them and they get targeted for it so I was there before it got out of control and then I did find through TV you know the ministry of like TBN and stuff being solid that when you are working in the area you have a long hard day it's refreshing back in the day when it first started to see what the latest, you know, if a Christian ministry is on, and they were really Pentecostal, really country, somewhere, you know, and I had people I know that were more educated, I'm educated, I had a lot of people that were mocking, tall hair, makeup, no, you go, like I did. I want to know what caused these people. What is their what is your backstory? What is my backstory that causes you to behave right now? What are these people that are wearing this horrible makeup and big, you know, country hair? Tell me their story. Tell me their childhood. Let me build a little human kindness and compassion. And when I looked at Tammy Faye, you know, I don't I didn't follow them. I didn't feel something about, it, you know. I just thought they were amazing. What is this, you know? <laughs> And I can tell the fallout because that's another story because I was there in Virginia in the ministry when all that hit the proverbial blabbermouth fan, you know. So I was sent to certain ones, not to them. So I watched if I were to visit 
Word of Faith at that time, of course, there was Vineyard. I would be sent to different ones, different kinds of ministries for me to grow in out of state. And when I looked at my discovery of Word of Faith, I looked at the root of the founder. And I had, I need to have another part because I don't want my signal to go out, but I have so many levels of appreciation and thanksgiving for the, really, Kenneth Copeland at the beginning and the ministry of the f basic first parts of it, you know, and then s along the way, different things from it. And Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth Hagen was, to me, the, in my opinion, even though their country and people have used his name and reviled it, made this big thing. I even saw his name reviled and by somebody, some cult lady in South Carolina who uses Word of Faith. I know the difference. I've been up at the roots, you know. I saw that person in South Carolina, that lady, the female with the cult word of faith, that is not good, using it. That's what it does. That's how it's happened that we have bad names since the 80s, 70s. I happen to watch, I watch the British newspapers to see what other nations are saying. You know, watch a few. There was that lady, the cult figure that says she's word of faith in South Carolina getting reviled and you know telling the horrible stuff that Kenneth Hagen had done his picture was on there I know the route I even went back my sister and former brother-in-law he died but their family was moving up I was in Dallas still after the pandemic and everybody felt led to go somewhere and so they went up to to Tulsa so they are there now and I went up there with them, and I hadn't been for, you know, 15 years. And I pulled away at the grassroots and heard myself and saw things I needed to, especially the ones in Texas. So I respect them. I value them. But we have to break connections that are direct connections because of the grassroots ministry interpretation followers that say they're under them. That was my big experience. They're not exactly faithful to the character, quality, respect in the leadership that says they're under the, a lot of these movements, not just them. So this is why I believe it's every person for themselves, honor the fathers and the mothers, but study, please don't revile the people. Even the ones that are against the word of faith and against, you know, online, those people that are the anti-book of Acts, go back to them. Respect them. Say, now what in the world caused you to act this way? What was your root, your background, any of these TMZ styles? You know, they're humans. We got to be in, uniquely dependent upon the Lord right now. <laughs> know your doctrine. Paul said, know me, know my lifestyle, know my doctrine. Do that with all the founders. All right, and all of us. So I believe in not taking things as a knee-jerk reaction in ministry. That's too easy. That depends upon hearsay, guessing, and good old boyism, and being a knee-jerk red state reactionary. Religious spirit. No, no, no. You have a little depth and maturity and quality in your character, you know? So if I were to say how I learned about Word of Faith is a couple of things. I was out when TV ministry started in Virginia. Dad had died. Mom had, you know, called a ministry. You know, get the call. You feel led. I got the newsletter I had called Encouraging Word. Did 15 years in prayer ministry and, and all that stuff. Praying prayer protection for pastors and leaders. Also, mom, piano, uh, instruct, you know, professor and Bible teacher, media, TV, whatever, post doubt, pre Dallas, <laughs> pre whatever, showbiz, whatever. So I was there and sent to know the body of Christ, the pure hearted time that it, not everyone is, of course, but the pure hearted basic time that you could go to a gathering of pa you know ministers, Christians, and if they introduce themselves black or white as a Christian, you knew that they really meant it if they said hello. <laughs> you know? There wasn't this big doctrinal 
whatever hoopla as there came later, gradually but fast. But I didn't realize the difference between doctrines of patricianism that would come in the church, Roman patrician aristocracy, money title, bias and hierarchy, respect our persons, and only respect for some and not the others. That has been the shock bugaboo, basically, in the church after they got wealthy. <laughs> so we're going to have to do more than one part, but these are some roots. So if I were to say this, I, I went up to Tulsa many times. I was strongly in Virginia, a different kind of Christian. I'm not all out there, but I was watching to see if they're true or what I, you know, God used a lot of it, not all of it, but I watched because I thought some of these are really country. And they have their way, I thought, back then, I thought, some of the speakers, you saw different ones. I wasn't against them, but I also know that I, want, I see Jesus a little bit different. My mother, who was a, a student, took in some of their pupils that were in the Bible College, Rama. I'm for Rama. Thank God for good things at the foundation core level, healing and joy and not being worried and authority without all the legalism today, false teaching added or false authority. Go back to the simpler roots and study. So there was nothing like we see and they weren't known. But I saw firsthand that when people signed on, well, you know, good people, people would sign on because they needed a daddy. They would sign on because the people were drawing a crowd and they were usually poor people. A lot of rich people didn't join Word of Faith later until, you know, it got bigger because humble people poor people are desperate enough to go and try something and the proud are haughty and look down on the country and that still happens so you have to be careful look at their doctrine their character their lifestyle hear God for yourself so nobody I could tell was off they were just different had a different faith you know emphasis like I said I didn't go for Oral Roberts myself you can uh, so much went on I just don't but I did I use still basic core edification randomly when I need it from I'll put on the Kenneth Hagin scriptures only healing or some of the faith like John Hagee even but I don't abide under their wing under their control but I want to say that you should have many favorites from different kinds of speakers. Some are from Africa. Some are from Spain. You can have ones that nobody has to know about, but I'll tell you. Because I'm tired of seeing everybody who is not even word of faith lineage being now reviled for money, causing pain to Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I would think, for making more cynics, creating more hearsay followers, not just heresy hunters, and then failing to discern the body of correctly, which could cause them great penalty from the Lord. But also, not even knowing, because I googled it and written about it, did they, chat, GBT, have a practice where Jesus Christ and Paul and the apostles called out false prophets in public and made them, you know, false prophets? No, they kept it in the community and didn't mention them and did to correct them and didn't withstand you know they told it but they didn't market it for monetized videos and accuse it to be latest and greatest talking head like now so I will label the naming and defaming movement as the new prosperity teacher movement unless they change their ways. But I won't tell their names and I won't put your face or your person or house or ministry on my video. So I don't want to tell you who to follow. You hear God and know your Bible. Paul is so good about that. He said, 
follow me only if I follow Christ. That's how I do it. He said, don't swallow everybody's Kool-Aid, work out your own salvation. That's how I've always done it. He said, four common doctrines, Ephesians 4, I do that. He said, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God the Father of us all, let me help you out. You never heard that. All right. If they don't believe that, that to me would be a hallmark of a false prophet, but also a confirmation that they are not false. They only teach partly false doctrine. A whole lot of it need to be corrected. The, the uh, Ephesians 4. So let me say this. If I see one more person calling out the following, I mean, this is just a few, that say they're, uh, I'm going to do it because they're, it's just a, you want to enjoy, you want to really have a holier, uh, a fear of the Lord, a humility and respect on these Christians, you know? So let's say who is not a prosperity teacher, though they look like it because they've made money, but that was a different move to test you and me, but also I wonder, because I think, you know, people have their books, they do things like T.D. Jakes and Stephen Furrick, all these people have done books and things, that, productions and plays and music that I've never done. I don't want to know their stuff, but I'm tired of it, so let's say this. We're Christians. Paul said to watch, To this would never have happened if you knew your Bible, everybody. Paul said in 1 Corinthians to the church as a warning, don't say I am for famous so-and-so, I am for Paulos, Paul, say I'm for Christ. Don't say I'm for secessionists or defragging the doctrine or Crossed by the Unity or Tevo DRC or Bishop T.D. Jakes or anybody else, dark skinned or light skinned, apostles so and so from the high heat seas. No, you say you're for Jesus. Tell the young they're off. They brought up in the TMZ, make it rich, ambitious age, which is society and these churches, sadly, so nobody's taught them. Nobody's told them any different. We need some heroes that God gets aside and deals with about it. So if I say I'm pro-Christian, but I'm really careful who I let speak into my life, what their authority is, how they're living their life, if they're going to say they represent me by being representing, I represent the whole body of Christ, I'm going to tell you they're all fault. No, that is frightening for me. It's frightening. Think that around and pray about it. Setting up one face, one group, one movement over all of us and over them. So we will be talking about it in a half. All right, let's say, now when I look at prosperity teachers who's not, meaning not means they did not come from the lineage of Oral Roberts to my knowledge, Kenneth Hagen to my knowledge, he's the least, he's the least controversial. And also, I went up there a few years ago before COVID, with my mother and sister and I was sort of like not really wanting to go to there but I went I had not, I had been to Dallas where it was really no fear of the Lord not humble no deep Holy Spirit uh, bias but also some kind of competition and celebrity I hadn't been for years up there and I went a few years ago to Kenneth Hagin you know with them for a conference or something you know a night or two and I went, back, I've, wow, these have the holy fear of the Lord. They, they are not into themselves. They were country, but you got to know your doctrine and not be such a fakey, proud, vain, always right type. I'm sharing a sila, not a dogma. They had a spirit of adoption, not aggression. <laughs> They had a spirit of adoption like many churches, especially Afri <laughs> like denominationals, African Americans, any Hispanic, you know, usually go, it's a spirit of adoption. It's not sizing you up, scanning you down, mesmerizing, <laughs> cult spirit, no. Pick the good. You're free to pick the good throughout the hay, keep, I mean, th keep the hay throughout the stubble. So I went up there and when my mother, when my dad died and mother and sister heard from God to go up there, I was in ministry and I had only gotten my BA in religion. They, I put comparative religion, you know, it's all the religions that I, I was a Christian. I thought, I don't want to get, you know, lose my faith, get confused. So I was very, I was not really a good, 
I, I was not wanting to compromise, so I didn't get good grades. You know, it's good, but that's okay. So I went to the Lord, and I prayed when I got back from Tulsa one time, because everybody's getting their degree. You know, everybody's starting to get on the roll, all these ministers, mass-produced, black and white, from television, also the winds of doctrine, good and bad, from mostly charismatic tongue talking, you know, because it was new to most of us, many of us, at least to us. But I was solid, so I didn't run with it. I thought, I don't want to, you know, but if it kept growing and growing and you feel this sort of pressure, even evangelicals, you know, the 5013C started to be big, parachurch church, and I was involved in pastor's gatherings and mature. So I thought the pressure was on and I was a mom with the ministry, you know, married and a mom. And I came back from the wonderful time in the faith, in the praising, you know, it was new back then and really quality. And I came all built up, came back to Richmond. I thought, oh man, that's spiritual back then. Lord, I said, Lord, do you want me to go to Bible college? Do you want me to go to seminary like all these other people? And the Lord said, no. And I went, no, because I wanted to be like everybody else. You know, that's the secret right there. The Lord gave me a scripture somewhere in John, which I'll pass to you for anybody that wants this. The Lord said, and this is how it's been. <laughs> the Lord said to me, John, whatever that was, you will have no need that any man shall teach you, but the Holy Spirit will be your teacher. And that's how it's been. How have you heard the Lord well, I had good Bible doctrine beforehand. I always fellowshiped with the saints. I always got teaching, not religiously, because I wanted to. I always knew it was right to be balanced. I, for a while, had a board. People that spoke to my life were dating all these things. It was the trends of doctrine, the fads, but also I really think it is right. If I ever meet quality, the right doctrine of depth and maturity and soundness, you can, I'll let people speak into my life again. I'm looking for that in ministry, Christian ministry. I had not met Levitical patriarchism, the foundations that are off in witchcraft watching, uh, Levitical patriarchism, I had not gotten in celebrity, so that's why I took out, you know. I'm very careful, you know. Too careful maybe, but we're working on that. So back in the day, this is to help people as a prophet now, an apostle, as a prototype to say, let me help you. If you have met any of this stuff and you need to have someone, you know, affirm you, defrag you, help you guess questions, iron trumpets, this is why I'm here. As a prototype for this new move. I don't need to be over you, but I'm not going to be controlled by you. This is a Galatians 1, 1 and 2 off-scouring seer of the world, off-scouring apostle, cross the unity movement, but it's for the sake of the Lord, not being elite. All right. Putting some puzzle pieces together, maybe as a off, you know, over here, whenever you want me. So when I say word of faith and I see it labeled for 20 years because of money making, and then people who are not even, if you trace their roots of where they, the denomination or things are under, they're not even kin to Word of Faith. They're Baptist, Assembly of God, Free Spirit, Charismatic, an Independent Move, Pentecostal. So I'll name those three. Bishop Jakes is not. He looks like it. I don't know Bishop Jakes. I'm not in his realm, but I see from the beginning he's helped me. And I see all the stuff that now goes, you know, controversy too. But when you look at his roots, and I was at his church, so, you know, I'm pro the core revelation, and he really does move in the spirit. He's Pentecostal, not word of faith, all right? He just has had talent and gotten a lot of fame, you know, worldwide. I'm not knocking him. It's his, you know, everyone's going to stand before God, including me. So are you. I'm not going to call him out when I've never walked in his shoes or his suffering realm of the spirit. It's a big suffering spirit, believe me. I know it. <laughs> we, we know the occult spirit is whew, big. All right. So with that said, you cannot trace, in my opinion, Hillsong Church to the roots there, Assembly of God. 
They got famous. Their music is still good. Whether you like that style or not, whether you like stadium music, you know, whether you're reserved like an accountant in one little, you know, tradition, that's okay. Yes, their leadership had big things, but I mean, really, you got that's a test for you. Are you going to go after shark bait, modeling the accused? Are you going to go like, oh, I'm mature. Let me look at the good things they've done and be watchful and preach humility and balance. When you get that big, you don't know what's going on in your, you know. I have no clue. All I know is I see it's the latest scandal. Oh, the, the devil, the hell song is just, you know, have all this stuff on all these to make money. <laughs> to make money. It's a money-making movement. And then the gossip, oh yeah, featuring the people that fell. Now they're making money. That's their choice. I'm not watching it. But the music's okay. All right, that's one. The old song was not Word of Faith. They look like it, but they were Assembly of God, which is really pretty much anti word of faith historically, where I've seen it. Anti. They shouldn't be that way. Nobody should be that strong. You know, but that's their choice. All right. Uh, then I would say Elevation, Stephen Furtick, Baptist. He looks like it, but he's not sinning. He looks like a. I mean, I go there right now because it is a joy. It is a joy to get off from witch watching false teaching really wanting to have community joyful diverse loves his wife respects all kinds of people is not in it for himself people can have money i even thought of kenneth uh copeland i don't know them i don't even i'm not a part of them but when you have big money maybe god allowed this is just a thought i don't know i'm not your i'm your sister what if I, all these people are reviling people with big money that have big ministries and the Lord was giving them the big money in case of a big slump in the economy and they could help people out and help the ministry keep on going. But anyway, so when I see Kenneth, hey, uh, people that are bashing for money, the prosperity movement and calling everybody as a prosperity teacher because they look like it, they've never done or been around to know the research I've done in many. The other one would be, who's another one? Um, well, Joel Osteen does go back tied to Word of Faith, but I don't call him, I guess you could say that would be, but I don't revile Joel Osteen. I like him. I've never walked in it, you know, I'm not going to go after him. I feel he's got good fruit and the people, he respects them. I don't know his bookkeeping. I don't know where the bodies are buried in your ministry or anybody else's. But that's between him and the Lord. <clears throat> then these, we see the accusers have gotten so ready for the next bloodthirst, you know, the, the juicy gossip. They called one of them a few months ago. I can't even read it. Same kind. Billy Graham. He is so blah, 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 blah. No. James Robertson. Oh, blah, 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 blah. blah. Dr. David Jeremiah. Oh, nobody will like anybody. They're all complaining. And after a while, it's like tawdry, smuck raking, whatever it is, muck raking. <laughs> so then I saw, and I will get a few African Americans on this list. I will not mention your name. I respect you. But there was one person I did stumble across and noticed that he'd several people had made, it looks like many people, maybe it's the same people, same one, had gone after Kirk Franklin, the worship leader. I don't know about Kirk, you know, I respect nothing against him that I know of. I admire him. Been around a long time. I don't know all his private stuff. It ain't your business or mine. Somebody was calling out, getting comments and video viewers monetize videos because Kirk Franklin said that Jesus is a goat. He had some kind of rap where he called Jesus the goat. Well, that turn these people were like under 40. That triggered a giant accusing monetized video slam. You know, forever. Yeah, we know he's bad. Yeah. yeah. Even Pastor Tevo knows what the word goat is in the modern day slang in the hip hop or the youth community. I was in DFW at a millennial church a few years ago, five years ago, 
And the pastor, young pastor, used the term goat, greatest of all times. That's just one of the words out there. And here they're trying to, they were younger than me. They were of the generation younger than, the same as the millennial or not. And they didn't know that. I knew it. I'm correcting you. You're looking for money. You know that accusation sells. You're looking for fame. You're looking to be the next famous, worldwide famous. That's what this is. So I'm speaking out. So I would say now, oh yeah. When my dad, I'm going to tell why I like Word of Faith for myself. Where I pick out the hay. I can get flamboyant because you're that bad, some of you. That's why. Usually I'm pretty calm. Easy to do. We know. <laughs> to shake up that icy, icy heart, you know. So, my history of being a, a mother and dad, well respected Christian, before all this, in a happy, right now I'm happy with denominationals as friends and Starbucks buddies, you know, that type of friend. Christians of black and white, you know, not having to prove myself to the charismatic. So, when my father died and my baby had been born, he died, my grandmother died, the praying grandmother, Boo, on my mother's side, two weeks, two months later, or right before the baby, excuse me. I had postpartum depression with the new baby, nobody in town to take the baby or give me, she did not, and she's a wonderful person, thank God for her, you know, but back then, it's the firstborn, no, I had postpartum depression, and she did not sleep, the precious dear did not sleep for two and a half years. She was up all night, like two, every two hours. So it was really in hindsight, the Lord, you know, taking me down to zero <laughs> to get, to call me, you know, he called me. How he did it was, cause I had really depression and there was one little, it wasn't a lot of stuff to turn to, no YouTube, any of that, no friends, no relatives. And I knew the Lord, so I didn't go away from him. I didn't unalive myself, which could have been. That's why you got to teach people some faith now. To spare this, you know, help them, you know, give them something beside your quote of the religious community. So I was alone and strong, you know, in, but suffering burnout. And the Lord had me walk into the living room where there was a radio. And back then we had Richmond little country low watt AM radio for the Christian community. I thought it was 9.15 I think on a Tuesday morning and I turned it on for something hopeful. When I turned it on, not knowing who it find, it was a cheery voice that it was, it said, choose to be of good cheer and study the Bible and I did ever since and guess who that was cheery Kenneth Copeland I will not go back and disrespect somebody that God loved enough to have him go through all the arduous turmoil heck on earth even now today big mistakes no mistakes I'm not his critic or his judge I'm not your accuser I'm not their accuser but I will say that is why I'm here today that particular movement and knowing sound doctrine, who to listen, who, who to not, but also the praise and worship that came in, the um, prophetic movement, but it was not to be shown, it was privately, you know, like many people who ble were protected by the conferences, by the teaching of this last famous move that is now, a lot of it has grown into big boyism, some is not word of faith, the big ones, in my opinion, at least Kenneth Copeland at the top and Kenneth Hagin, they have not gotten that way, LP. But I'm not there in their members. I'm not there with the people that are can that do it. But I'm not putting them all down. It's a one by one thing. I'm just saying how this is how it works. The first generation of a move is called by God. If it's really true, it will be the Oracle's revelation, male or female. 
in our land. They will go out at the Lord's leading, build teams, Bible colleges. People will latch on to it if it's really, you know, from the Lord. And then those people are not in the same caliber, privilege to the Holy Fear of the Lord revelation as the top person. They can mix it up, add TV, entertainment, money making, pigsty, living. All this stuff is what you got. So like I said, I saw my mama taking borders when she was up in the 80s at Kenneth Hagen's. It wasn't Kenneth Hagen, nothing about them. The people I saw that were so hungry for God were new converts. This is what I'm saying. These are anybody. The people that she took as borders, she and my sister, male and female, she took in a bunch of doozies. They were right off the being saved, which is what you want to say, but then you got to know this is how we got ministers like this, you know. Some of them were so tough, so dysfunctional, right off of drugs, right off of this stuff, horrible stuff, abuse, that when she was the house mother, and they were Christians, really Christians, they were wanting to be delivered, they wanted, they were enrolled in the Bible school back then, but they had not had the basic love and nurturing of a of sound family. Maybe they had no sound mind or no dysfunctional hard drive. So this is how we got lots and lots of crops of big and small ministers that can use and abuse Word of Faith, Pentecost, prophetic, any kind, black, white, or brown, missionary Baptist, because they want to be loved. They want to be, have an identity that's better than the past they came out of. They've had, they've had a dry love tank. Plus, within that, you can have some that have opportunists, fakie and sinning, you know, big boss. But because I've been around this turf so long, I really do have compassion for the natural person because they are, there's a lot of warfare against people, you know. So I do not want to revile, I, put, I don't want to say anybody is naming and claiming because that's the old hit term, accusation from somebody, usually, I hate to say it, I will bring it out. In my life of study, who are the groups, what pastors and patriarchs usually cry out and call out names of Word of Faith, basically? Which ones on radio, in real life, at their pulpits, they're usually the ones that scowl me down with LP ministry, but it's really the name calling that I go after. I can't believe it. When I look, because that causes me as a prophet to God's servant to say, now who, it, what doctrines go after word of faith with their mouths in public time after time? And radio stations, why are you letting people do that? But anyway, they do it on pulpits, famous, mega, and micro. I've been around. Assembly of God. It's Assembly of God the mean streak of part of it. Now I know Assembly of God and they're pure. A lot of them are probably the most wonderful, kind people, even silent people, but there's a streak that goes back maybe to the group in their what, 50s or 60s or more that does it, the LP streak. I think that was because the times they were mentored the times we were raised in when, you know, it was the fed and the grassroots, the country law Mountain Williams School of Theology background to call out the sinner. It's the harlot. You know, I'm still going to minister about that because that is detrimental in this move of God. It is detrimental to you, to God's name, to Pete. Why do it only adds to the anti Christian stuff, bias, doubt, unbelief, cynicism, racism, critics that are out there. And that's where we're going on and on about this. Anyway, that's it. That's enough for now. Got any questions? Just call. We're starting a new move. It's already started. God has told me to come forth as the a Deborah judge. A judge of doctrine fruit. Not of you. Not to accuse or judge. Just to stir it up. 
to say, everybody look right now and see what is the truth. Who is the truth? Am I? Am you? Is it pure truth? And who has got the truth that we should really respect, that we should go after, you know, and follow them? So God can bring forth Elijah's. He can bring forth Amos's. He could bring forth silent, no-name individual prophets like he did for the Temple Eli. Boys will be boys, LP, users, abusers of the mothers, not respecting, and money. Money women and could be men and children, God forbid, to clean out the old move, to bring in the Ichabod with Samuel, the new day. So we're for that. I submit it now. i got to quit, you know. I submit it unto you as a sila in God's love. And if I have one more of these false prophet teachers, I'm calling it because if they're teaching that a person they've never met like myself, and they can't read me, is a Jezebel, and I'm teaching all the truth, and they've never talked to me or anybody they've accused, you got a false prophet until they repent, or lady or he, him or her. This is the scuttlebutt. This is the stuff of Christian ministry today. Frustration, dysfunction, but also, hey, we get to correct it, we're fed up, enlightened. We just know, you know, we can do it better. That's all. Let's all do better. God is good. Bless, bless you. Bye-bye.